Hi everyone, this is Amari Walker and I am currently starting my fifth year at Duke University studying environmental engineering and getting a PhD. So a lot of my friends and family have asked me, what does it mean to get a PhD in environmental engineering? And what do you do on a daily? And what is your research? So today we'll just go through a few things about what is an environmental engineer, what is an environmental engineering PhD, and then what is my research about? So let's get started. Environmental engineering usually combines a variety of studies, including geology, chemistry, biology, hydraulics, microbiology, to create solutions to protect the health of living organisms and improve the quality of the environment. I am an environmental engineer. What does that mean? Well, think about things like Flint, Michigan's water. Think about uh, air quality in places like Beijing and Los Angeles. Those are the problems that we typically try to tackle and address on a daily basis. So my personal work at Duke is actually looking at water quality through the lens of chemistry. In other words, I am an environmental analytical chemist and an engineer. I personally love this work because I became very passionate about it when some of my classmates became sick when I was studying abroad from the water they were drinking. So it brought a lot of questions to me on the quality of water around the world and the fact that there are communities that are still not getting access to clean water, not only just abroad, but even here on our own home turf. Thinking about places like Flint, Michigan, or places that don't have access to public utilities or public municipal water services. To get an environmental engineering PhD, it's broken up into a few sections. The first is to spend two to two and a half years finishing up coursework. So you have to be an expert in the field of environmental engineering. So that means taking classes in transport, in chemistry, microbiology, modeling, and whatever else you think best fits your research. Once you finish with that coursework and become you know, an expert in that area, you have to dive into the literature of your field. So you spend almost your entire PhD reading up on articles and what's previously been published by the scientific community. So a day in the life of a PhD student who's finished up past their second year usually comprises of going to the lab. Pre-corona, I was going to the lab like a normal eight to five job and doing research. What I do on the day to day can be separated into four main parts. The first part is read. I read the literature to understand what has been done and what can be done to improve that work. That way I make sure I'm not recreating the wheel and doing something that doesn't add value to the community. Now, the second thing that I do is start an experiment or do field sampling. Field sampling usually comprises of going to a lake or an ocean or even a mesocosm and taking samples like samples of water, sediment, fish, plants, you name it so that I can understand chemicals being released into that environment. Now, benchtop studies are typically done within the lab and they're just short-term projects that allow me to study the release of chemicals under a short time frame. I expose plastic to a variety of conditions like temperature, light, or even turbulence in order to understand what chemicals are being released and how fast they're being released in relation to these variables. The third thing that I do is I prep and analyze samples. So that usually requires me in the lab using instrumentation to concentrate the samples for analysis or clean up the samples and then making things like calibration curves to quantify certain chemicals in those samples. To analyze those samples, I use a mass spectrometer. So we have two of them. One is typically used to quantify our chemicals and the other one is used to identify the unknown unknowns. Once I've done the analysis of what's present in the water, I 
I then move to my computer. So a lot of the work that I do um, when I'm not in the lab is on the computer, is coding in R and making figures or doing statistical analysis of the data. So the final thing that I do is I communicate my science. So just like what I'm doing right now, I typically take what I find and I bring it to scientific conferences and I talk about it to people in the area. And I also work on writing about it to publish in a peer reviewed scientific journal. Since my second semester at Duke, I have been working on three main aims because in order to finish a PhD, you need to have at least three bodies of work that you have made a significant contribution to. My three bodies of work, I could basically break down by this acronym of streams, spraying, stomachs. It's a little weird, but you'll get it when I talk about it a little bit more. My first body of work is on streams. What I do is look at two main plastics, epoxy and polycarbonate. Now, when you think of those two plastics, think of your glasses. Your eyewear lenses are typically made of polycarbonate. When you think of epoxy, think about the lining on a floor. If it's shiny, it's most likely epoxy. Or think about aluminum cans. The lining of a can, like your Coca-Cola can, or your LaCroix, or even your can of beans contain epoxy. Now what these two plastics have in common is that they're typically made from one specific chemical, and that is bisphenol A, or shortened to BPA. Now some people may have actually heard of this because they see water bottles or baby products that write all over them BPA free. BPA is typically the building block of epoxy and polycarbonate. One of the reasons why it's important to study is because they've shown that BPA can be potentially carcinogenic, can affect reproductive systems for humans and other animals. My main work in streams is to take these two plastics and expose them to a variety of environmental factors. Things like exposing them to light, or exposing them to warm water versus cold water. And then looking at things like turning the plastic into a microplastic. There's a huge difference in the release of chemicals based on how small the plastic is. And so we wanna be able to actually quantify that and understand the impact on when plastic becomes microplastics. So for the topic of streams, I take these plastics and put them in simulated fresh water to see what chemicals are released, in particular, BPA, nonalphenol, and tert-butylphenol. And so these are all known alkyl phenols that are potentially harmful endocrine disruptors. For my second body of work, spray, I look at plastic that is sprayed on the coastlines. So some people don't know that our coast, whether it be lakes or even the ocean, can undergo different forms of erosion. And some engineers have come up with some creative ways to try and prevent that from happening. And that is usually using a form of plastic, whether it's polyurethane or polypropylene. So I look at those two plastics and expose them to what's called a mesocosm environment and a benchtop experiment that mimics a freshwater system, again, kind of like streams, and see what chemicals are present in that plastic and are being released and how they are changing when they are inside the water. Because it's not just the original form that stays in the water. When they, once they start interacting with other constituents, they can change. When you expose them to light or to air or to soil, or dust particles, these chemicals can undergo a variety of transformations. Some of them are good, and some of them can be potentially more harmful than the original product. So my goal is to identify these chemicals and quantify them the best I can. For my third topic, stomachs, which is kind of weird, 
but that's exactly what I'm doing. I am actually collaborating with a colleague who graduated from UC Riverside. And what they did was expose commonly found plastic on the beach, like balloons or fishing line string, straws, styrofoam cups, plastic bags, you name it, a variety of those plastics. And they took those plastics and put them into what's called a simulated stomach digest. And so those were meant to mimic the conditions of what it would be like if a bird or a fish swallowed these plastics. And they looked for a certain host of chemicals that are potentially endocrine disruptors or harmful to a reproductive system uh, for humans and for aquatic life. Now, I took those samples and what I'm doing is actually called non-target analysis. And so this is where environmental analytical chemistry gets a little fun. I look at identifying those chemicals that are present in that leachate. Things that we don't know sometimes are because they have been transformed. Sometimes they have reacted with the other chemicals or other things present in the environment to form new chemicals. And I use computer software and coding to identify these chemicals so that we can have a better understanding of the impact of plastic in a stomach. Now, I'm sure once you've heard all these amazing projects that I'm working on, you want to know, well, what are the findings? Tell me what happened. What do you actually know about this? And, you know, I'd love to tell you, but you could also read my dissertation in a year or you can comment below and we can have a conversation about it. Now, thank you so much for listening. And I hope that you really enjoyed this video and will subscribe, like, comment, and you know, tell me what else you wanna see, what, it, what else you wanna know about what it is like to be an environmental engineer or to be a doctoral student. So yeah, thanks. <laughs>